Hello, fellow music makers. I am gathered here today to show you what sugar can do for you. What better way to show you what sugar can do for you than to use the Sugar Trailer Music session? This is the actual session of the trailer music of the sugar video. Since the idea was to mix the sugar music trailer using only sugar, try say that three times fast, then I'm going to show you the settings that I use to mix the sugar trailer with sugar. The sugar trailer music was composed by moi and my good friend Ravi, partly in Ableton Live, partly in Cubase, and then stemmed out and imported in Pro Tools. As you can see, it's very few tracks, and it sounds a little bit like this. If you watched the trailer, you heard the music. What I did here on this session is I just muted all the sugar on this track. The settings are already there. I'm just going to turn them on one by one as I go and tell you why I did what I did. First, a quick rapid summary of the session. Basically, it's just a bunch of stems going to a sum bus, and then the sum bus right here is padded 3 dBs because, you know, it gets loud. And then I have a sugar, which is currently bypassed, on a sum aux, and then that sum aux goes into the sugar print track. Very basic. Let's start with the bass drum. Let's locate somewhere the bass drum is playing. Boom, that must be it. This is my sugar. So without... Obviously, I'm fattening the bottom. I could push it further. That would be too much. Push the fader. Like it? Great. Don't like it? Move on. By the way, when you're pushing a lot of bottom like this, it's probably good to use the filter. I have this filter right here, so this is the push without the filter. See how it allows me to push more bottom, but still kind of like raining the energy a little bit. And I'm using the steep filter to make sure that I'm not cutting too, too much at the very bottom. So raising the bottom, but using the filter to pass it up. And you can tell from the settings what I'm doing is I'm pushing saturation, high passing, and then jacking up the low mids without. And this makes a lot of sense when you hear the two of them together. Notice that I'm using the drive to saturate this bass drum. Without the drive, it sounds like this. I'm going to push it for you to identify it. Gives that bite that I need. Plus the bass drum, the two of them on, sounds bananas. Next is the clap. So the clap... It's just an extension of the boom, boom, clap on the loop. And what I'm doing with the clap is this, fattening it a lot and still high-passing the very, very bottom.
and the three of them together. See how it fattens the bottom? Still no EQ. Then there's the tabla part here. I have a gate here. I'll show you why. I'm going to turn it off. So that's the tabla loop that Ravi added to my original pocket, and uh, it has a lot of ambience to it. So I'm using it to make it drier. So that's not sugar, but this is sugar. The reason why I'm making it drier is because I'm going crush on this thing. Check it out. Without sugar. With. Obviously, if I removed the gate, it would sound like this. Which is not great if you listen to this whole thing. With the gate. I wanted the I wanted the gate to stop there. So the tabla without the sugar and the rest of the pocket. Then I have two badass bass loops. This one. So it's a little woolly, right? It came out of um, Ableton Live like this. What I'd like to do is get rid of the bottom but add some push. This is what I did with Sugar. Listening to it now, I think I'd like a drive too. High pass it a little more. And then I have this other little bass that goes boom, boom. So here, because I have this other bass right here, my point is to bring it forward. And so I'm adding a lot of the shine and some drive. I think I went too far on the, on the drive here. So far, this is with sugar and then without sugar on the rhythm section. So as you can tell, it's a really great tool to be able to just like sublime things, enhance things, make them more exciting or more distorted or um, fatter or brighter, but in a very controlled and easy to use way. Um, you don't need 10 plugins in a row. You just need this one and it does what it does. That's why we tune it that way. This, my friends, is a quintessential, let me mute that stuff, 80s hit. It's also kind of boring. So I put some reverb on it. This is another non-sugar plugin. Positive genius. And then sugar to bring out the bite. Without. With. And. 
with everything, without, with, just a little bit of sun. Here's my favorite part. Being French, I have an unlimited license to use vocoders in songs. In this particular case, I didn't do the vocoder. I did the oh, 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 oh. Ravi did the vocoder, but since I'm on the track, we have collectively an unlimited license to use vocoders. Let me bypass the two plugins. There's a stereoizing kind of thingy. With. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Not going to change the course of modern music, but at the time I felt it was a really important thing. But the sugar, however, so this is raw. This is sugar. Notice how fat it is without, that's too fat, it's woolly. And also, it doesn't cut. Check it out, this is without sugar. I mean, it's fine, but it's not record. Check this out, with. So I'm using the high pass filter here up to almost 400 to just get rid of that wool and then adding some shine and some really, really high-end air. Two other pretty cool things are that little sample right here. Without the sugar. Listen to the very, very top, the air. When using the high band, you should always try yin and yang because there's some phase wizardry behind there and one of the two will always work in my experience. That's why in the presets, I always put yin yang when you need to try yin yang. So let's try yin yang here. Let's jack it up so you hear the effect better. That thing is better with the yin, so we're gonna do that. Nice. And then, there's this thing here. I love this melody. Check it out. Same thing. You know what, we can, let's just not be shy about this. And it sounds like this in the sauce. All right, now I have sugar on a two mix and this is the last sugar in this session. On a two mix, I'm using MS mode. So instead of just jacking up the whole stereo field, all these tracks were stereo because they come from Ableton Live and they tend to export in stereo. Pro Tools handles things differently. But on my two mix, I'm gonna use mid size. Let's first listen to it and then I'll explain to you what I did. Without. So I'm using a lot of the punch low band in the middle so that I can extend the mix this way towards the bottom and make it go under the lead in the middle. And then I'm jacking up the very, very high end of the whole track. And then I'm widening it by using quite a bit of shine on the side. I'm going to bypass all the different bands and turn them back on one by one, starting at the bottom.
hear how that ying 50 brought the on the bass drum check it out again i'm going to start from where it goes boom <laughs> A lot of people use an EQ with kind of like a smiley curve on their mix bus, and it's great. I do that too. But this is really nice when you want to add a little more than just EQ, a little more energy and a little more trickstery. You can watch the actual tutorials to figure out what every button does in Sugar. It won't take very long. It's very straightforward. Um, there's one button I want to show you right now is the effects only button because that's a really good way to figure out that you're not screwing up also to understand and learn what sugar does for you. Check it out. This is my mix through sugar on the mix bus. And this is effects only. This is what sugar is adding to my track. So raw. Effects only. And the whole shebang. And that's the basic sugar workflow. This is where we are right now. And that's where we started. No EQ, no compression, no parallel in anything, just a little bit of sugar.